Welcome to the Disagreeable Nerd Podcast, a podcast where nerds from various ages and backgrounds get together to discuss movies, TV, books, and anything else that pops into their small, simple minds. Now sit back, relax, and let their ignorance wash over you. And welcome to Disagreeable Nerd, episode 114. I'm your host, Gabby. With me today is Deech. And also subbing in for a sick Chardet is. Yeah, it's Jerry of yeah. fame of other podcasts. Welcome to the nerd show, Jerry. It's nice to be on because I, I was one of the founding members of the Disagreeable Nerd. I was on the original until it kind of petered out in its second season. <laughs> <laughs> then I like uh, a Michael Scott. I noped out, and ever since it's kind of been slowly going downhill. But I, I enjoy it's picking back up. It's picking back up. Well, we're gonna have you on for some hot Boba Fett thoughts since you does, have deep thoughts on Boba Fett. I just gotta ask: Does that make Paige James Spader? Yes. Okay, I can see. She's that. she's more like a uh, she's like Ed Helms. <laughs> I enjoy her ignorance. <laughs> she does have anger issues. Yeah, Charday's sick, so get get well, Charday. Get better. She's got that. She's got she's got the COVID. All right. So Jerry, I, I gotta say, not having your camera on is kind of throwing me off. He doesn't have a camera. He's got to uh, go to his wife. And I, I will know. I it. do have a camera, but Gobby told me Gobby told me his camera wasn't working. So well, I, figured I, I, I fixed it. Camera. Well, then hook it up. I can't. I'm. I've already started. It'll mess us up. All right, all right. That's fine. He never has his camera. I embrace the darkness. Okay, Deej. Oh, you don't have any sure. news, do you? News? No. I got news. What's your news? Okay, so uh, <laughs> I like chess. <laughs> okay. And I, I really, as much as it was very cliche and not a true story, but the uh, Queen's Gambit, that Netflix series that came out that caused quite a stir, won a bunch of Emmys and all that mess. The actress in it. Anya Taylor-Joy? Taylor correct. Right. Who's in like the last night in Soho. She's in everything so, right now. Yeah, she's in everything. Well, she's, she's the new. Be, she's the new Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, well, she is about to be a younger Charlize Theron in the prequel to Mad Max Fury Road. Really? Yes. Their facial said, bone structure is nothing alike. No, not at all. Oh, they can get around it. <laughs> like, Anya taylor Joe is, like, super sharp and pointy with big eyes. Huge eyes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's like Tom Hardy doesn't really look like. Mel Gibson? Yeah, Mel Gibson. There you go. But, yeah, but, 2024 yeah. is when it's set to come out. And they're apparently getting ready to start shooting it now. And I, I, I just kind of, I really like Miss Joy. She brings a lot into my life, and I think she's doing an excellent job right now. R.I.P. Sydney Portier. What's your favorite Sydney Portier movie? He didn't know. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I know, I know it's like the historically, you know, that was like the movie because of the time period it featured and he being a black actor, broken, breaking mold, all that stuff. But it was way before my time. For me, my Sydney Poitier movie is Sneakers. Freaking love Sneakers. And, oh, oh, and Brian Levicoli. I posted this on our board game snobs group. I said it, my favorite Sydney, my personal favorite Sydney Poitier movie is Sneakers. And he comes on there, oh, to heck with that. It's this. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, you can't say to heck with my personal favorite. It was Sneakers. I've, oh, he said, uh, what's the one where he comes to dinner with somebody? Guess who's, coming, who's coming, to coming to dinner? Guess who's coming to dinner? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Uh, Captain Obvious. <laughs> I, I've never seen it. Her, Audrey Hepburn. Big deal. Uh, Ashton Kutcher uh, revamped it in his hilarious version of it. Did y'all watch oh, that yeah. one? I've seen that one. I haven't seen Sidney Poitier's version. No. I, uh, Sidney Poitier, the only movie I've ever seen was Sneakers, and it was been years ago. Yeah. Yeah, Gabby, I think the only movie you've seen of Sidney Poitier has been Sneakers. That's why it's your favorite. <laughs> uh, no, I've seen the, uh, uh, with mom, I watched In the Heat of the Night, but it was years. I, mean, I was a small child, 
I just barely remember it. And also, it's like super dramatic. Everybody's sweating because it's like, you know, in Louisiana or something. The heat? The heat. Due to the heat, everyone's sweating in that movie constantly. And it was they weren't very too. clever with their movie titles back then, were they? <laughs> I mean, I love the t- I love the TV series. I want to say, wasn't that night. a TV series? And it had the yeah, guy was, from uh, Everybody in the, All in the Family. It was great. That TV series, one of the best comp shows ever. Yeah, that ran for a long time. Anyway, Betty White, now Sydney Portier, both in their 90s. Betty White, 99, Sydney Portier, 94, I think. And then people ask, what did they die of? They're old, old age. <laughs> Life caught up to them. What did they die of? Come on. I would I would have it written into my will. He was like assassinated. If I live to be 90, <laughs> like if I don't, I die. And they start asking to be like, yeah, oh, he crashed his motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he fell off a cruise ship. He Something was, interesting. He was jet skiing. Netflix has a Scott Pilgrim anime series planned. Deej, that's your favorite movie, right? Yeah. One anime, of. though. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't big on anime, but I'm I'm learning to like some of it. I like animation, anime style. I hope it's not. I hope it's like the actual comic book style, video game style they had. Oh, well, that they, it's a yeah. I wouldn't mind that. It's uh, the Scott Pilgrim comic book is in that style, ain't it? Like the manga, mm-hmm. or manga, or whatever they call it. Also, who's the guy that does uh Galaxy? Galaxy, my God, hmm? James Gunn, Galaxy, Galaxy oh, Quest, Guardians of the Galaxy. James Gunn talks of a Knight Rider revolve, revival starring Hasselhoff. My my wife and I have just what? started rewatching old television series and on Amazon Prime, Baywatch was on it. So we started like season one. And man, that is a that's a surreal experience. <laughs> it is super cheesy. <laughs> yes. And very 90s. I mean, like it, 90s. It just you mean 80s? It was 90. I think it was 90, 89, 90. I think it was like 90. Baywatch Knight was Rider. 90. Oh, Baywatch. Baywatch. My bad. I was thinking Knight Rider. No, yes. Knight Rider was 80. Baywatch was like uh, 89, 90s when it started. Yeah. It's such an awful show. I never watched it. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to watch it. <laughs> it, it. It tries so hard to be edgy. To be, ex- yes, and exciting. And it's just, it's not. Just like the Zach Efron, Dwayne Johnson remake. Trying to be edgy and not working. Wasn't, uh, didn't Baywatch, was it like a procedure like that? There was always some murder or something on the beach they had to go solve. Well, well let me, let me, let me uh, regale you of just like episode Please two. Please do, since you've been watching it. Which is basically these young punks who are riding what is, a, I guess at the time, illegal watercraft Ooh. that were <laughs> jet skis, basically. And if Stand you Stand up ski, or sit downs. Oh, no, the stand-up kind. Yeah, there's a big rivalry, see? Oh, Skews. yeah. Skews. Yeah, Skews is where it's at. You can't do that. <laughs> it's like the Jets and of the cor- Sharks. <laughs> of course, they were out gallivanting around and harassing a young lady that was windsurfing. Oh, and because one of them worst. lost control, they struck her, killed her, and then they ran. So they did a hit and run on the water, mm. which is like the weirdest type of hit and run because you're in the ocean. Like, it's not like you can't get away from somebody. But anyways, so Hasselhoff and his crew have to investigate this. And it was quite riveting. <laughs> Fortunately, Hasselhoff's son, the young man who oh. I, he's, he's got some weird 90s name that, that doesn't exist anymore, like Toby or something. I can't remember the kid's name. Uh, was the one that solved the mystery. So it, it was very exciting. And this Aren't is they basically... Lazards? Well, yeah, they're all lifeguards, but you investigate murders when they happen in the ocean. <laughs> Don't you know? Is that maritime law? No, it's just <laughs> lifeguards or cops law. and maritime law. It's they take law. it upon themselves. And they are a well-funded lifeguard unit. Oh, they have but, some... hey, wait till you get to Baywatch Nights, Jerry. Ooh. Oh, I like Baywatch little Hawaii. Bit, little bit was steamier. My favorite. Baywatch Hawaii was my favorite. I didn't know there was a Baywatch Hawaii. Uh, you just, you, where were you? <laughs> Anywhere there's lifeguards, there's a Baywatch. <laughs> Baywatch. Where were you? So who's your favorite cast member? Uh, from the original cast, there is a a gentleman who makes zero sense. Hobie. I'm sorry. The son's name was Hobie. Hobie. That was like a, a brand of shirts. Yes. Yes. The kid's name was Hobie. I knew it was something like that. Hobie. 
Yeah. It's like like Marty and Hobie and all that stuff. That doesn't exist anymore. There is a man by the name of Richard Stevenson Parker who plays, and I can't remember. He, he's, he was like a somewhat respectable actor until he got involved in Baywatch. <laughs> and <laughs> essentially he became, his character was that he went to law school and became a lawyer. He used to be a lifeguard, but now he's a lawyer. So he just shows up sometimes to like just volunteer. So he's a lawyer who volunteers as a lifeguard. And he is very much the everyday man, but yet capable, but yet he's not sexy. He's the, he's the everyday man of the Baywatch team. He's the smart guy. And he's a very interesting character. And he was way too old to be in Baywatch, but he was. Well, good on him. But I wonder where good on him. He made his living and now he's retired, no doubt. No, no doubt. No doubt. And I'm glad that like you know, back then in the nineties, as long well, that that era, you just had to have good hair. If your hair was good, had that eighties hair, you could be a movie star. My name is Hobie. I want to solve Hobie. this murder. This girl on the ocean. Yeah, you, wow. you, you, you've captured the essence of Hobie. And I'm trying I, to look up. I didn't I, expect I'm, to be I'm, having a Baywatch conversation tonight. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to lay a bet that this that that child, like I don't know what happened to this guy. I'm trying to find out what happened to him. <laughs> Surely, he overdosed. <laughs> no, nope. sure. he became a he became a lifeguard. <laughs> no way. Uh, no way. Seriously. No way. I'm sorry. The, the actor was Jeremy Jackson. Jeremy and Jackson. Jeremy. Jeremy. I mean, you like, you know, lots of germs. Yeah. I'm Jeremy. Uh, he's, a, he's a singer. Oh, he's Jeremy deceased. Jackson. The singer. Jeremy Dunn oh, no. Jackson. Oh, my God, Jerry. Get your stuff right. Jeremy Dunn Jackson is an American actor and singer. He's best known for his role as Hobie Buchanan. Okay, so whenever you're best known as somebody, like your first and only row, he's 41. He still looks pretty good. Oh, no, uh, he went picture. to jail. Oh. He went to jail for for robbing somebody. Personal life. Oh, he also had a sex tape with Sky Lopez. Apparently, yeah, that's what you got to do to remain relevant. Apparently, that's a Baywatch thing. Yeah. All right. So no other. Oh, there was one other news thing here. If I can find my phone. Oh, this I've never. I I think I've had this written down and I've never gotten to it because we always get sidetracked. They're making a freaking, like, serious, dramatic version of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Do y'all know this? Why? Good question. It, there's a teaser and everything. I think it's going to be on NBC Peacock. But it's oh, like... yeah, going to get a lot of traffic over there. The, the dramatic version of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Who wants this? Why? Oh, my God. I mean, I'll watch the first episode. I will. I will I have not to. watch any of it. I will. I refuse. I'll watch the first episode. But, I didn't uh, get NBC it. Peacock. I don't know how. I didn't know that existed. It's a streaming service, just like, like all the others. You got to download Peacock the app. Does it only stream on Nokia's? Like, what is it? Like, how does it? It should be on it. your Roku. Like, not, it should be on your Roku or whatever. You don't even. What do you have? Do you have a Roku? Do you have your phone? How do you watch TV in your home? Uh, well, well, I, I, I've just recently obtained a Roku. Okay. Well, P Peacock so, is on there. All right. I'm ready for some. Uh, you said this is the NBC, huh? I wonder this, if I can watch Diagnosis Murder. Or it's was like CBS? Nickelodeon. Uh, Star Trek is on there, right? Because it's Paramount. No, no. Paramount's different. Paramount does all the CBS stuff. Oh, Peacock. Never mind. I'm thinking about Paramount Plus. Yeah, Peacock. No, I Paramount I Plus has Star Trek and all the CBS stuff. Right, Peacock has. Right. There's too many services to keep track. There of. is a bunch. There is a bunch. It's like that Ubisoft freaking gaming <laughs> subscription. It's the stupidest thing I've heard. Peacock has Sequest. All huh? right. Sequest. Huh? You don't know what Sequest is? No. By the it, it third. Would, imagine, huh, I thought you might. Imagine, imagine Star Trek, but underwater, where the captain is the guy that was on Jaws, from Jaws. Which one? It's a... It's a it's a submarine and they just go around looking for for fish, basically. But there's drama happens. Huh. It's very good. Very good. All right. Well, let's get into episode two of Boba Fett, which we're gonna continuously do throughout the season in hopes that it continues to get better, which in my opinion, this episode it did. 
All right, so I know we didn't do why butts, but I do want to mention I told oh, okay. you I watched Daredevil today. Oh, that's right. The movie. The original movie from 2003? I think it was 2003. It was just as cheesy as I remember, <laughs> but it's so good. It's so good. When you say it's so good, what do you mean? How is it so good? It's it's corny, but at the same time, like, I don't know how to explain it. It's It, it gets ripped on a lot, but I like it. Like, there's nothing about it that I don't like besides some very, very, very corny fights between him and Electra. Particularly oh. the park scene. You mean they're sensual fights? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's the only part I'm like, eh, this is kind of bad. But but everything else about the movie, I just really enjoy watching that movie. And you, I think you should give it another watch. I have I literally have not seen that movie since I watched it in theaters in February, the dumping ground of movies when they're garbage of 2003. And <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that was terrible. That was a terrible, terrible movie. Yeah. But I have not went back to look at it in the eyes of, is it enjoyably terrible? Because yes, and it's a got thing. a killer soundtrack. Daredevil, Daredevil really? Is. Yeah. Like yeah. what? I used to own the. I used to own the CD. <laughs> <laughs> what? What in particular do you jam out to? Uh, it's got like Seether, Fuel. Oh wow! Some emo like rock there. Yeah, it's like it's pretty good. I like it. I, every time a song came on, it was like loud. It wasn't like background music. And I was like, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I was like Daredevil. Yeah. Huh. Also, a cool little walk around I just noticed today was John Favreau was in it as Foggy Nelson. Mm, okay. Okay. Who, who was just in, in Spider Man my... sitting across from the new Matt Murdock. Yes. Which I thought was kind of cool. Okay. In my brain today, literally today, I'm thinking, okay, Daredevil. In my brain, I was thinking, is John Favreau in that? Like, no, he's not the Foggy Nelson. Because in, was? The, in the Charlie Cox one, it's this other guy. Yeah. And I'm sitting know, here I'm trying not. to think, I'm like, that's okay. That makes sense. Interesting. Well, let's get to Boba Fett episode two. There are so many freaking Easter eggs. Did you know the, the okay. Overall thoughts on episode two first before we go into it. Deej. Uh, I thought it was a much, much better episode than one. I thought they actually kind of made me interested in the story now. <laughs> just because one did not get my attention very well. Two, I thought this is actually kind of is going somewhere and I'm excited to see where it's going now. I would agree with you on every level. Jerry? Uh, it, it improved greatly. I think that it started off very, very slow and it's it's missing a lot of the trappings that most star wars movies and shows have to really keep the fans interested and so it's really having to rely on some nostalgia but uh it's it's picking up i, I have a little faith in it I'll, I'll be interesting to see where it goes this movie has some deep cuts that like i, I guess nerds know but you had to be like a severe deep cut nerd to even know before we get into that, so this this episode basically has the modern day setting, as we will call it, of him taking over the he being the daimyo, taking over, still trying to be crime boss, blah blah blah. Then the huts come and say, "No, this is ours because Jabba was our cousin." But before that, we have the whole interaction between him and the mayor. Well, first of all, I guess we can go to, I guess we'd go to the beginning. I just don't want to do it step by step, but he has this uh, assassin that tried to kill him in the first episode, which was a horrific scene, a horrific action scene. But I, I, I read that they hired or in the first episode, Robert Rodriguez, which makes terrible movies. He's one of Quentin Tarantino's buddies. He likes to do everything. And so he did the action scenes and everything. But in this one, they hired, they actually had a second unit uh, director, which was the second unit director in Mandalorian. So he did the action scenes. And that's why the action scenes were so much better in this one. So much. And Robert Rodriguez likes to do everything, even show up in his own shows like Alfred Hitchcock like. What did he do from Dust Till Dawn? Uh, he's done a bunch of those. Desperado, maybe? No, that was a. Uh, Oh, maybe he did do Desperado. I think he did. His movies are weird. He does all of them like Spy Kids Office. Yes, <laughs> yeah, he did. He did Desperado. <laughs> yes, and, like Machete and Machete. And, uh, all them like know. offshoots yeah. of Quentin Tarantino movies, basically. <laughs> yeah, he's he's basically a Quake brand Quentin Tarantino. Although uh, I did like Sin City. Never. Yeah. Okay. I've never yeah, seen that. Sin one. City was good, but uh. 
he's trying to do a little too much and he needs to let people do things that they're good at and directing action is apparently not one of them. So this one starts off with Boba and uh, Finnick doing their thing, trying to, oh, the, they're trying to get the assassin to say who sent him. And so he's all, you know, I'm not going to say. And then he drops him into the Rancor pit there in Jabba's hut, the Jabba, Jabba's palace, not Jabba's palace, whatever that, the, is that Jabba's palace? Yeah, I guess Jabba's it was, pal- okay. It's his condo. His condo. <laughs> And so he thinks he's going to get killed by a rancor, and then he says, the mayor sent me. So then they go to the mayor, and the mayor's like, oh, you should check out the bar you just came from with the Twi'lek lady, Jennifer Bills. So then they go to the bar, and she's like, oh, wasn't me. Then they walk outside, and the huts are out there. The huts, Jabba's cousins, I don't know their names. I know they have names, because every freaking thing of Star Wars is super specific, and they have specific names. Yeah, I think they're just called the twins. I don't think the twins. I think they're new characters, though. I'm sure they have names. Are they in some sort of incestuous relationship? It's super weird. <laughs> I don't know. How do how do huts make love anyway? I don't want to know. <laughs> what is, what do they do to what do they do to procreate? Uh, they they a Pizza Hut or something. Pizza the Hut. That was Pizza a, the Hut. <laughs> that was they have a lot of slang balls. that all has to do. All their homes, if they don't show like their base and it's shaped like an old Pizza Hut, if they don't go deep dive and just make all these <laughs> puns regarding the uh, their obesity problem, then, then it's yeah. just not going <laughs> to... Null Hut is just a really uh, a bright red uh, top <laughs> hat. <laughs> yeah. Pizza Hut hat. When they walk in, there's the buffet <laughs> thing that's still there with the plexiglass. It's but very it's just obvious. A bunch of, just, it's just a bunch of little frogs and mice. Yeah, it's very obvious. Just a redone pizza. You hut. mean Gorgs, Deej? Because that's what Jabba was eating. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like that type of stuff. Like people have made up. And I guess the comic books do a lot of this. When the huts were sitting there, and that one's like wiping himself with the rat-looking thing. <laughs> it's apparently called a hujib. And there's like a whole comic book called The Planet of the Hoojibs. There's a whole comic book dedicated to this weird little animal that some creator, you know, made. It's insane. And they're sentient. It's a sentient rat. It knows it's being wiped with the, from the sweat of a hut. And But the gorgs are what the little frog thing that Java was eating. Mm. So anyway, so they're like, uh, you know, this is our, this is our, we're going to take over. Right. Bubba's like, I don't think so. And then they say, oh, yeah. Well, then the black... Chrysanthemum? Chrysanthemum shows up. And, yeah, me and Charday were like, oh, another Wookiee. And Charday's like, ooh, he's a big old... He's a big old rascal. And apparently he's he's deep in the lore as well. Like, he... Apparently, him and Boba have a background. They were sent out by Jabba previously... In the Legends or Legacy, whatever that's called, you know, before all the retconning happened, Boba and Black Chrysanth- Chrysanthemum were sitting out <laughs> together <laughs> to find some other stuff for Darth Vader. They did stuff for Darth Vader. They did stuff for Jabba the Hutt. They, they have a history. We could wait for the Black Chrysanthemum Disney Plus prequel to the prequel be out in the summer. Exactly. He'll get his own shell too. It's just insane the depths, and like they're making all these references, and it's like nobody knows this crap. And to know this crap, you have to go into these Wikipedia's and find out who's this, who's that, what's he wiping himself with. Like it's so insane the depths the Star Wars universe has. So the first half, of the first half, what first fifteen minutes is the quote unquote modern day. Then it's all flashbacks from there on out, and the flashbacks make this episode because Boba. He does like a great train robbery thing and there's a good action scenes. But the part that uh, when he's goes into this like gas, gas and go like this liquor store, gas and go bar thing. I think it was a bar. It was a bar. There's a name for it. Did I write it down? No, I didn't. Oh, Toshi Station is what it's called. I say it used to be Tosh- Toshi Station. Toshi Station. No, okay. It's or what. No, it's Toshi Station. It's still Toshi Station? Yeah. Okay. The couple, the 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 man and woman that were there, Cammy mm. and Fixer from deleted yeah. scenes of the original Star Wars movie. Like this is insane. <laughs> Where do they pull this crap from? Oh my god. 
friends of Luke Skywalker, Lays. Yeah, like she grew up with Luke in canon. Like, yeah. it's just to me, it's, it's where he wanted to go to pick up his power conversion, man. <laughs> It's insane to me that... You remember that they, first whiny line that Luke Skywalker spouts out? I was going to go to another Kastashi station to pick up some power converters. <laughs> He's like, no. It's a spot on impersonation. Yeah. <laughs> the first, first time we see Luke, he's whining. Yeah, I just... Uh, the, the deep pulls that these shows do, A, don't mean anything because 90% of people have no idea that they're, they're even... Like, I, I did not even know... Like the people, uh, the podcast I was listening to, they said, this is Cammy and Fixer from a deleted scene that like five people know about. And they grew up with Luke. I mean, it's super cool, but nobody knows this crap. It's just insane to me. It's fascinating that people put that much effort into this lore. Like the, everything in Star Wars is an Easter egg. All right. But anyway, so there's a bunch of action scenes. The the train robbery with the Pike Syndicate is good. Uh, him training the Tuscan Raiders to ride the the what are they call bikes. them speeder bikes was good. I enjoyed it thoroughly. This was a tremendous step up from episode one. Let's discuss Boba Fett's teeth. Anybody want to discuss his teeth? It's absolutely insane. Does he have dentures? They're super big, super white. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I thought I did notice that. He just he's armed to the teeth. Like mine are too yellow to be Bubble Fett's teeth. He just they've got to be dentures or to, uh, I told Paige, I said they gotta be dentures because like they're not normal looking. Or what do they call veneers? Maybe veneers. Tamira has some veneers in. He's really proud of them. All all that Aquaman money. He's <laughs> he's a, he's not a good actor. Aqua fresh. I appreciate that he's putting the effort in. He's trying. He just sucks. And he's too old. He's still in good shape for a 60-year-old man, but this episode was better because the action was better. The effects were better. I love that train sequence. The 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 woman Tuscan Raider that's kicking butt when she's going through the train, that was awesome. I like that uh, sequence. And overall, this was a great increase on episode one. It has me actually looking forward to the next few episodes, and I hope they continue to get better. Yeah, me too. I was going to say, I don't know why I keep thinking about this, but there was some comics. There was a line of comic books featuring, is like a future. I think this is like Luke Skywalker's, uh, maybe like it's way down the line, but a guy named Cade Skywalker. Either one of you guys ever? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. That was those legacies, okay, I, right? What was that? From the, never mind, the legacy comics? Yeah, legacy comics. I kept wanting to say Legends, but I know that's the books now. The bad guy in that, the Sith who I can't remember his name because it's been years since I read it, I think was an exiled Jedi that went to Tatooine and like joined the Tusken Raiders, if I remember right. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I keep, he became like a warlord or something. And I keep, I keep wanting to think that that's him, the Tusken leader, because oh. I think it was around that time. Cause I think Obi-Wan's on the planet at that time. And in the comics, I think he fights him on Tatooine, like shortly after he goes there and drops off Luke. I know it's not going to happen because that's crazy to they're not going to put that in. there. It's a real deep cut. But it's like it's like my my hit my head cannon to me. <laughs> I keep wanting to think that's him and I know it's not. But yeah, that's my only other thought. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I do have thoughts on why it's catching a lot of flack um, in terms of both the critics and fans, mainly because, like I said previously, it's missing a lot of the trappings that Star Wars has all the very various little things that tend to make star Wars, the classic that it is uh, the book of Fett doesn't have any real, well, just look at the Mandalorian. Like it is of the same deep cuts that Gobby has been griping about are in the Mandalorian. It's just that he's focused now on those Easter eggs rather than the story, because you're not really delving into the, the actual characters in the book of fed he's actually you know with mandalorian everybody just thought the mandalorian was cool it started off very neat you didn't really care about all the easter eggs that were scattered out there for the the fans that were really deep into it also just the the lack of any i guess it's uh, star wars is basically a kid show that's told in a way that in adults will like it 
like even George Lucas was very intent on making sure that he was able to merchandise the action figures and toys and like that. That was the whole thing with the Ewoks and Return of the Jedi. That's what that was about. That's why every single uh, character in all the episodes seven, eight, and nine, those little progs, the little weird looking quail birds, those were all just ploys that were put in the show to have something cute that kids could buy a stuffed animal of. Hence, Baby Grogu. The Book of Fett has no Baby Grogu. There is no hook that has not only the younger generation, but just the generalized public kind of caught up in a character because nobody really cares about Boba Fett. Unfortunately, the first episode showed what everybody has wanted to see put the film anyways, which is him getting out of the Sarlacc pit. We're done with him now. So now we're continuing on with a fresh new story about him, and it's just not that interesting. And this lacks all the key elements that are just found in most Star Wars shows. And it's just now picking up a little bit to where I have some hope for it. But if I had to take a guess, they've only got seven episodes of Book of Fed, I believe, in total. They've got five more episodes left. They are going to have to really, really shoot for the moon on this one and introduce some sort of interesting narrative hook or something of that nature that's going to really get the fans excited. If not, this is going to be a one-season show. Like, even if it if it just keeps doing what it's doing, there's no way they're going to renew this. They're not going to let it affect the, the success that is the Mandalorian and the magic that it has. One of the big complaints that I've read about is the whole what's the arc what's boba's arc and i'm confused because okay boba was a bad guy quote unquote right i mean he was killed supposedly in return of the jedi so he was a bad guy since he's come out of the sarlacc pit he's a good guy but, like, there's been no reason for him to change. Like, what's the change? What's the purpose of his change? I don't think he's ever been a bad guy. He's yeah. just a bounty hunter that was employed by bad people. Yeah. He's just a gun for hire. Okay. So, even as, as Daimyo, he's like, we don't kill people. We don't torture. He's, like, got all these rules for himself. So, still, the point is, what's his arc? So, okay, if he's not an arc, if he's just a man traveling the galaxy, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. Your character still has to have some sort of arc, and his character is not having an arc so far. He he made that known from the first episode. We don't torture. We don't blah blah. I'm going to do things differently. I'm the good daimyo. So is he going to be a good guy ruling with niceties? Is like wh- what is his arc? Like that's my thing too. I'm like I don't understand. Maybe it's going to be the switch. Maybe he's going from good to bad. That's that's a theory I read. Like maybe we're going to see Boba actually go dark and become a bad guy. And Tatooine's that- just going to really, <laughs> really take him down. That's anti Disney plus, but that would be interesting to see him start off being like I have you know rules. I have ethics. I don't torture. I don't kill. I care about these sand dogs I pet and Tuscan children, but then like see him turn into a bad guy. And somebody said uh, it was a slash film, uh, Peter Soretta. He's like, what if we see Boba Fett become a bad guy and thus become the future adversary for uh, Jen uh, in the Mandalorian? That would be mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. Now they do have a, an opportunity for that. I don't know if Disney plus, We'll, we'll, we'll take that route. Um, they're no doubt they're looking at this of, of trying to, again, like I mentioned before, drum up some sort of merchandise to drum up something that's that's going to be things that not only the kids are going to like, but something that they can really sell to the general public. And Boba Fett is just not that, the, the current one that we have. And no. even the original <laughs> designer of Boba Fett, when they were constructing the character, Boba Fett was meant to be the main bad guy in Return of the Jedi. Like that was the original idea was that he was going to be this very titular character and be wrote in as being this, the main evil in that first half of that movie. It just ended up in the writing. They ended up cutting it and coming up with Jabba and 
and going the route that they did. So even the the guys that originally constructed the character are quite upset and have recently voiced their displeasure with the fact that Boba Fett's helmet is off 90% of the time. Right. Like they think it, it kind of robs the mystery, like Zorro and its mask type thing. And, and so they really, the, as Gobby was bringing up about the, the story arc, the one thing that I have no faith in Disney being able to do is to create any kind of cohesive story arc. And I would just remind Gobby that he fell in love with Ray, who had zero story arc. And I think that that's Disney's ploy. But is, she was likable. Well, I mean, not a story even, that, but no, 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 I understand. She doesn't have a story he's arc. He's saying one for the other. So far, he's not likable and he has no arc. Yeah, it, it, he's but he's neither. He's neither. <laughs> Tamir, whatever his last name is, is neither likable, nor does he have a, he's providing an arc for Boba. But he does have very good teeth. I, well, I think that that perhaps is what we're going to have to see unfold. They've got five more episodes to pull this off to really hook us with this idea of where they're going with the series because they've offered nothing else. They've offered no cutesy Grogu character. They've offered no real strong lead. It's it true. I, I, the one thing I do like about it, and I'm sound like I'm very harsh on it is that I do like the disjointed storytelling where we're, we're getting a little tease of what's going on in the future and then having flashbacks of how he got to where he's at. I do like that. This whole dances with Tuscan thing, this this whole stealing these ideas. So far, they've made so many references to like Boba Fett being Moses. There is a whole lot of symbology of that's what the story is going to be, of him trying to lead the Tuscans out of whatever situation that's no doubt going to crop up here within the next few episodes. And he, that's going to be some somewhat of his story arc. Like you're looking at it like there is no story arc. Well, you're getting the story arc. You're seeing, but it's the Tuscan Raiders. <laughs> that's the weird thing. Like we're expecting the Boba Fett story arc, but the Tuscan Raiders are getting the art because in the first Star Wars, they're just these bad guys that just randomly assault Luke. But now they're like the indigenous people that are being abused, and you know that that's no, no, no. No, you're missing the point completely. Oh, I'm missing you the had point. A, My bad. Yes, you had a yes, you had a bad guy go and die basically in the Sarlacc pit. He comes out, he's rebirthed, so to speak, and now you're seeing his story arc take place of what changed him, what he's going through, and so you have the old. Boba but Fett he was now. changed as soon as he come out because he didn't kill that dog. He petted the dog. Okay, why are you caught up on this dog? You're because like it's because so somebody... because that's a cliche thing that everybody points out. They're like, okay, in movies when there's a bad guy, he kills the dog or kicks the dog or kicks the cat, and uh, it's like a it's a total cliche screenwriting thing. If there's an animal, you let people know what type of person you are by how you treat the cat. That, that is that is not a cliche. I know I, I know you heard that on the internet and you know it about is that. And no, he petted not. the cat. I hear it, here's he how I can cat. disprove it because I know you got that opinion from somebody else. Every single bad guy in every single James Bond Austin Powers has a cat and they love that cat. Just because you love animals does not make you a good person. That cliche was something you picked up off of Reddit. You can drop it. It has nothing to do with the fact. In the most that movies, he, it's true. No, it's not. Just because he pet a dog. Except for the guy in James Bond petting the cat. That's it. Uh, Austin Powers, Dr. Evil. Oh, Dr. Austin Powers, the ripoff of James Bond? The My parody? point is proven. <laughs> My point is proven. But no, I mean, that that is not like, well, name a movie where that's the case, though. Uh, Secret uh, Window. John Wick. They kill the dog and he goes to seek revenge. That's the whole thing. Oh, and D John Wick is the titular story. Storytelling. It is. Uh, but no, my point being is, is that you're seeing the arc of Boba Fett. There's you're no seeing arc. it with the Tuscans. No, yes, you are. You're, there's no you're arc. Seeing, he's he's been dog, good the whole time. He's been good the whole time to the Tuscans. There's been no what, arc. What, he come okay. out of the pit, a super nice. Apparently in the pit, he decided, hey, I want to be a nice guy. No, no, no. <laughs> and no. I come so out and, oh, they took my armor and I've been I've been made a slave and I tried to escape. They beat me, but still, you know, I'm still going to be a nice guy. Like there's been no. zero arc to this guy. No, I'm, I'm, I'm no. OK, for instance, let's just go back to the first episode. He kills that monster. He wasn't being a nice guy. He was doing it out of necessity. It was something he had to do to protect this child. 
he would die without them. This is like a just a a, a main a, a prime example of like Stockholm syndrome. He's trying to do stuff to survive. He is their captive. He's doing things to get on their good side. He has just now bridged that gap where he's no longer a captive. Now he's kind of welcomed into the tribe, and now he's one of them. And I'm, I'm arguing that the fact that if you look back at probably the extended history of Boba Fett, that that is what they're trying to present very haphazardly. But this is his story arc. This is him becoming what he is now that you see when he's dealing with the huts. And so that that is Disney Plus's way of showing the story arc, of trying to ingratiate people to Boba Fett, of showing all this, uh, his backstory. And I, I like that. I, I think that, that that's been the strong point of the film. And eventually they're going to have to tra- transition away from that. They're going to have to get done with the Tuscans and then move on to yes, what people Yes, the Tuscans are the strong part. For me, that, that's, and that's the problem with this show, is the Tuscans are the strong part. He's got the child, now he's got this the the female, and then he has the, uh, the leader of the Tuscans head nodding him. There are lots of head nods in it. Oh, mm-hmm. Approved. Lots of head nods of approval. I liked the scene the very end where he's making his own gaffy stick and then he becomes a basically a ingratiated tuscan now he's got his own robes that they gave him so he ingratiated himself in two episodes so we're good let's move the story along because tuscans aren't the story well no no that what do you think well well, well, Okay, the, so the, the the issue is he shows up in the Mandalorian. Everybody's super excited. Oh my God, Boba Fett's in the Mandalorian. How the frack did he get from dead last we knew to where he's at in the Mandalorian? Okay, well that's what you're watching with the Tuscans. That is the story. Yeah, but you're acting like the Tuscans aren't the story. No, that this is by definition the various stories that the book of Boba Fett basically telling what has taken place with him that has led to him being this character. And so you're waiting for things to occur with, with job with the, with the, with the huts and all these other ones. That's just all set up for the future. That's not the story you're seeing. You're you're thinking in the background is still this hard Tuscan line. Like he's going to, oh, the yeah. Tuscans this are coming gonna in. This is going to be a major thing. This is okay. going to be a major event. They're, obviously, they're going to go with, like I said, something that's going to occur with the Tuscans, them getting killed, something dangerous of wolves, this type thing. But yeah, that is going to be a major, a major thing that's going to affect Boba. And then they're going to tie that into whatever takes place there in the future. And so they're, 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 they're really buying for time on this first season of trying to set Boba up. And I think it's it's interesting. Like the Tuscans are the story. Like, and if you're waiting for something else to happen in the future, you, you're wasting your time. This the the story I'm interested in, unfortunately, is the modern story. He's he's taking over this Java Palace. He's claiming himself to be the Daimyo. He's having trouble establishing himself. Like that's the modern story, and everything else is flashbacks. But I, I I see what you're saying. I need to wait and see how the flashbacks correlate into the modern story. And therefore, it all becomes one cohesive story, which I can enjoy. But right now, I'm not enjoying it so much because, A, there's way more flashbacks than there is modern story. The modern story is advancing very slowly, and that's irritating. Right. Because that is not the story. That is not the story. The flashbacks are the story. It, you, you, are, you are looking at the flashbacks as if they are some sort of trope. They are not a trope. That is the story. I, the, the way that I'm watching this movie is I have very little interest in what's going on in the modern times of what's setting up. That's all just Easter eggs that they're throwing out there. That will happen maybe in the second season or at the end of this one. The story of him developing that's the flashbacks. That's the story. You are watching a story take place. You're not letting yourself see the story because you keep telling yourself you hate flashbacks. I do Who hate cares? flashbacks ever since Arrow. Arrow ruined flashbacks for me. 
but but here's the deal. Well, that's your fault for watching the Flash. <laughs> real real watching quick. The, uh, <laughs> real quick. So here's the thing. Uh, hold on, hold on. I Deej, this do, you, episode. do you have any epi- do you have any thoughts, Deej? I agree with Jerry on that part of the story. I I agree with you that it's kind of a poor way of telling a story. Sometimes in this instance, I think it it might work out. The only thing I've been thinking about this whole time was trying to think of things that would tie in with this for future reference, but there's nothing that would be coherent with the timeline because I was thinking about Obi-Wan. We're about to be on Tatooine for a whole lot longer when his show comes out, but it's going to be before this, way before this. So I was thinking, is something in Obi-Wan's story going to happen that is going to affect what's going on now in this one, but it, was like, it doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm just kind of interested to see where it's going. At this time, I, I don't really have any gripes with it. I'm... I'm only two episodes in to a season. I got to see where it goes. Um, I don't have any problems with it at the moment, no. Just tell him, just tell him, uh, DJ, about, you know, if he can watch The Flash and The Arrow for that many seasons. <laughs> I, already, I already told him this. It's I already super told him this. hypocritical that he's like calling out cliches. I, uh, you know what? Watching those shows helped me appreciate what I'm doing and what I'm watching. And I was like, yes, I, now I see flashbacks are a storytelling setup device that is super a pain in the butt and they can be annoying but yet the arrow did it for five freaking seasons five freaking seasons and i hated every minute of it i just hate flashbacks i don't know why i have no reasonable reason to hate flashbacks other than Your reason is arrow because it was the arrow there right there and like he was an idiot in all the flashbacks i think that might be it it's like oh you were an Oliver Queen. You were an idiot in all the flashbacks. And like you were, you didn't know how to shoot an arrow. You were dumb. You fell for all these stupid things. But Boba Fett, like the flashbacks are him and the Tuscans. And that's going to slowly lead up to how he be, how he comes to be the taking over Bib Fortuna, Jabba the Hutt, right. their stuff in modern times. And, uh, Bib Fortuna being he's the toilet guy, right? Right. Yeah. What happened to him? Okay. So there's a, a huge, 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 there's a huge gap to fill from Return of the Jedi up till now. And that is what this show is attempting to do. It's like five years, right? Right. Yeah. But, but it's not going to do it. I mean, like the, the Tuscans are, are, of course, the actual story, like filling in the background of what's taking place. But if they had started each episode, if they had started episode one, had just been solid Tuscan action. Like if they just told it from, okay, here's, we're going to tell the story from the start. When in the linear the fashion. I, I was thinking fashion. of that. It's like, if they had just done episode one, all the Tuscan stuff, episode two, all the modern stuff, I don't know that that would help because I, I, I don't know, maybe it would. But this episode, there's like, 15 minutes of modern action and the rest of the show's flashbacks. I kind of wish they'd balance it out a little bit more. That's, that's my only thing I like. I want the, I want the modern stuff balanced with the flashbacks. Well, wait, I, you're, you're getting tied up in the idea of the, of that. When there's a flashback, you're not seeing the story. Whereas that is where the, the but the story is the modern times. He's wanting no, to be the not. daimyo. No, it's not. No, it's not. It is <laughs> not. <laughs> you, you do not understand. That is not the story. You, you don't understand. Yourself. No, it's not the story. The, the story is Boba Fett. It is not necessarily a flashback per se. If it's it, that is the story arc. It's it is the story told. for right now. You guys, it's only episode <sighs> two. Yes. <Yeah. laughs> That's the story. There's got to be flashbacks, but maybe in the next few episodes. You know what would make this easier? Maybe it'll be more of the present day. I wish Boba Fett was a super cool guy with super cool looking, you know, a super cool looking guy. Not a six-year-old it's just, man. It's not The six-year-old man with the dentures is just and not doing scars. it for me. It's just not doing it for me. The burn scars and the back to tank. Anytime you see that back to tank, oh, here comes the, here comes the, <laughs> and all they gotta do is uh, the huts. All they gotta do is wait for him to go in that back to tank and kill him. Case closed. It's done. Uh, uh, you know how Watergate was a big, a uh, big issue. Uh, this whole thing, I've been calling it Colgate Col- because <laughs> you've just been, you've just been grapping about the man's teeth for so long. I'm tired of hearing about it. Because the show to me is very comforting because it's, it's about a. It's about a guy who's middle-aged. He's got the dad bod. 
He has a CPAP at night. He has some PTSD <laughs> because like most middle-aged men, you have an injury. And his was that he fell down a deep well, <laughs> hit a drag out. And like his neighbors had to help him. And so now he's got some, he jo- he's joined the gang. And now he's stirring up trouble with the local like you know, housing uh authority where they're they're like the huts are like mad at him i mean it's hoa yeah it's basically he's going to come out and be like get off my lawn fennec shan has been utterly pointless up to this now you gotta say that parkour was 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 great (laughs) no it's great i i like the actress they need to give her some freaking stuff to do. Well, I am not thing. a fan of Ming Na Wen. She is so boring to me. I, I like her. I've liked her in all I her don't, stuff. I don't care for her. I do. But I want but to she's, know. She, all she's done is just sit there with her rifle through two episodes so far. She's so I boring. Want, just, I want to know why. <laughs> and maybe, maybe there is somebody in the Star Wars extended universe that has more knowledge about this than I do. But why in the world would you assign her to be his sidekick when you could have done Bosk and had a very Chewbacca? Because Bosk is evil. Yeah, but that's what you want. You want somebody. Who and Boba is- Fett's supposed to be evil. That's my point. That's what's frustrating about the show because they uh, uh, a Boba and Black cursed students, whatever his freaking name is, the the Wookiee in this episode, they Black work Sriracha. together. Black Cors- Sriracha Cors- work together. Corsantin. Boba Cors-Santin. has been a bad guy. He has worked with bad people. No, no. Yeah, he's Boba. worked for bad people. Bosk is for like, bad he hunts Wookiees for fun. Deej, maybe you might know because you used to read the comics. Black Kirsten, whatever his freaking name is, the Black uh-huh. Wookiee with the gold armor. They, I have seen this name all over the place. Dr. Afra. Ooh, I know the name. I know the name. Apparently, Dr. Afra. Of- He's got a lot of nasal congestion. <laughs> Dr. Afra is like big in the extended universe back in the old days when they had comics. I know the name. I figured they might have something to do with uh, Dr. Oh, okay. Chili Lona Afra is a fictional character in the Star Wars franchise, but she is the one that used black Kurzakstan and Boba Fett for other <laughs> things. <laughs> well, <laughs> Kurzakstan, that's good. Well, I think that the, that Boba Fett is just, he's worked for some bad people like, and who hasn't, I mean, really, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to f- forgive my stint with Mount Monsanto's, but <laughs> and he's so, so I've worked for Walmart, you work for Walmart. Yeah. The fact that you keep focusing on Boba being evil, like Boba's supposed to have some nuance, well, nuance. That's all I want is nuance. And I've received none. Well, no, you you you've declared him evil. I have not. Yes, you have. But listen well, back I'm, to the podcast saying, where you keep saying he's bad guy. He's a bad guy. I mean, in the guy. original show, he was a bad guy. No, he guys, he was getting paid to do a job. He was literally he could have the mm, wife so, and kids. So were the Nazis. Oh, you so I can't believe you're going that deep. <laughs> but no, it's like uh, Boba was just had a he had a job. He got paid. He had a bounty. Uh huh. Okay. And he just so happened to find himself working for some shady people. And I'll remind you that Han Solo was a bad guy. No, he was a... No, he murdered Woody. <laughs> Who? He murdered Woody Harrelson. Shot, <laughs> shot Woody. I was so shocked. Whoa. He killed Woody for you no gotta, reason. You got to shoot first sometimes. I, I know, but he shot Woody. And there's a bunch of stuff that Han did. Han was like, like in debt. He was like out there ripping people off. No, I, 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 like, I like characters that are in the gray. That's what they need to have on the show. Okay, some great so Jedi. The correct pronunciation is K. Rur Santan. K. Rur Santan. Sa- no, no. Or K. Rur Santan. That's Kurzakstan. <laughs> I still don't know. I I'm still don't know. I've been looking at the correct pronunciation. Back. I still don't know how to say it. I'm going back. Black Kurzakstan. Chris Christofferson. <laughs> it's it's K. Hyphen R. U. R. With an exclamation point. Then S. A. N. Hyphen T. A. N. I want to know why in the Star Wars universe there's no like Bob Johnson. Like, why is there no? Where's Darth Johnson? Where are the? Where Darth are the? Ta- where are the Taylors? Where are Darth the, Johnson are, and his impressive lightsaber? Darth Johnson. And they're like, <laughs> like, oh, who? You know, they're battling. It's Robert. He's got the like, see-through where, what, lightsaber. 
Yeah. Yeah. Why, why, why are all these people's names spelled and sound like, you know, like they're all these modern age baby names that are spelled with like a bunch of X's. I just don't get it. Just because it's sci-fi doesn't mean that you got to use some weird name. I am Darth Johnson. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds super menacing. (laughs) You'd have to have a big lightsaber. Uh, (laughs) Commander Tim. (laughs) Commander Tim (laughs) Johnson. I am Commander Tim Johnson. Listen to me roar. So episode two, we've had a lot of things to talk about and say about episode two of this show. It's much better than episode one. I'm looking forward to episode three. If you had to, if you had to lay a bet, do you think it's going to go middle of the road from here on out? Or is it going to go up or down in your opinion? It's, I, in my opinion, I'm going to say it's going to go up. And also I saw that Tamura has said there's like a big thing going to happen in episode seven, I think. Yeah, there's supposed to be a, uh, a like big a, reveal. Almost like a Luke Skywalker thing. Yeah. But it's supposed to be Han, right? Uh, that's what I've heard. But uh, I I mean, because it's because of the people behind this show, uh, Favreau, Filoni, they know what the crap they're doing. They failed me on the first one, but that's Robert Rodriguez's fault more than anybody, I feel like. If they leave this in the hands of people that know what they're doing, I, it can be good. I have optimism. So I'm looking forward to the, to the future episodes. Get that Zack Snyder for that last episode. It'd be eight hours Ooh, long. Lots of slow mo and lots of slow mo. <laughs> mood. The Atmos- Flash show up. Atmospheric music. <laughs> <laughs> the Flash show up. Just show up for some reason. He can blend Hyper- the universes together because you know you got to have universes all come together with a multiverse, and the Flash can do that for you. So we can have the Boba Fett from the legacy comics and the books and the movies and all that come together into one. I wish they would give me the Star Wars stories that I want to see because I have always thought that it would be so cool. And they kind of they kind of ruined it with Rogue One, the opportunity to do this. Although I love Rogue One, I, I I've never Rogue One to me is such an oddity because I love the actual show. Hate all the characters. <laughs> like Jen that, Urso, I, how dare you? I see. I couldn't even remember her name and like, <laughs> because so, it's you, horrific. You're not looking forward to Cassian Andor's show. Cassian, are they still doing that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh my yeah. god, that's gonna be awful. That's gonna be absolutely awful. Freaking Cass. I hate. I hate. Cassian Andor. He was a Han Solo wannabe, and they failed with the guy. They failed with his character. It was absolutely atrocious. If they're going to do anything, they need to do it with the the guy that thought he was a Jedi, but it really wasn't. Yeah, the, the blind, blind guy. guy. Yes, the with blind the guy. Yes, that's that's him, with him and his buddy. Yeah. Make a show on that. You got me. Do a prequel. So did Ang. Oh, so, yeah. so, so, so did Andor. Yeah. So did Andor. So they just go they around all did. whacking people. They're dead. Why do they care? But we need to know where they came from. I will say that uh, in Boba Fett, I remember in the in the books, whenever Jason and Jaina, which was Han and Leia's children, oh whenever God. Jason became Jason. Why do you name? Wait, 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 wait. We have all these weird names, and we have a Jason. <laughs> yeah, J A C E N. Jason. Jason and Jaina, whenever he became evil and like turned into like a Sith Lord or whatever, oh I think Jaina went and trained with Boba Fett in like <sighs> in combat. Whose so kids she are these? End up Han and Leia's. Where was Ben? That's Luke's son. In the in the comics? No, this was the books. So Ben was Luke's kid. Yeah, in Ben the- Ben Skywalker was Luke's wow. Luke and Mara Jade Skywalker. Mara, that's right, Mara. Yeah. So so wow. anyway, she trains with Boba Fett like in combat, uh, so she can end up killing Jason, <laughs> pretty much. So this kind of tells you how how uh, kind of how Boba was in the books. If she had to train with him in order to kill him, mm, this one not so much. Like I can't yeah. see somebody training with this guy. <laughs> he really needs to. He really needs to hit that stairmaster. Yeah, <laughs> because everybody's body shaming poor. Poor uh, Boba Fett with the dad bod, and really, he's he's in good shape. He's just got the <laughs> the COPD thing he's a where your thick. body kind of he's got he's got the pear shaped curves, and you <laughs> have shaped. to embrace that. Like I'm I'm really looking forward to him busting out 
He's going to get his white new balances on. He's going to take that dad bod and he's going to go out and he's going to chase people off his lawn. Come episode seven. The pear shape is not threatening. I like those scenes where he's learning to use that gaffy stick. But I'm thinking the whole time, like, shouldn't he be able to, like, kick his butt with a gaffy stick? But apparently that's a whole different type of fighting style. Right. But I, I liked, I really, uh, I said this before, I liked that whole sequence. He, like the, Through the whole episode, he's learning, he's learning, he's learning the gaffy stick fighting. And then finally, he's able to get his own. He gets, gets that lizard. Oh, we haven't discovered the lizard up the nose. That was yeah, a, that, that was, was a. That was a COVID test. He did the lizard <laughs> up his nose to see if he was all right. He did the lizard COVID test up the nose, and then he the hallucinogenic and, lizard. He went and got him a branch from this tree out in the middle of Tatooine that apparently exists because he brings back a real branch, the and, Goffy tree. And from that, he brings back a <laughs> Goffy stick. What happened? Well, I went and got high with some Tuscans. <laughs> I got caught in a bush, and I like come dragging home this stick, and I was like, "Boy, if I, you know, if I." whittle this down and put some lacquer on it and polyurethane this just be a good walking stick that's such a dad thing too i like that yeah. th- i like that they put that big point on the end of it like bam you could stab somebody in the face with it like just pierce their skull with that gaffy <laughs> stick it's a big sharp point that's mm-hmm. boba's pimp cane <laughs> all right well i want a bad star wars show i want to see the imperials that's what i wanted I want to see the Imperials building the Death Star and it be very gray and them doing bad things and there be Darth Vader. I want that show. No, oh, you that mean show. a non uplifting show? Yes. I want oh, it. Okay. I want I want Star Wars slash breaking bad. I want to see people having to make be Imperials making difficult choices and shade the Imperials in a different light to where there are guys that are helping out the Rebel Alliance. There's, you know, flesh that story out. That's what I wanted to see. But that's just too, gets that, too dark for that's Disney. Not, I was about to say, that's not going to happen on Disney. Plus. I want to see Darth Vader hunting down and killing the rest of the Jedi. I do too, desperately. And the Inquisitors. In sl- and in slow mo. All the Jedi be played by uh, cast members of the old Baywatch. <laughs> they need to make that. What's the Star Killer games? Oh, Force Unleashed. They need to make Force Unleashed into a TV show. Master Hasselhoff. Is that? And they need to make it canon. Sam Witwer needs some money. <laughs> well, he's been in the in the cartoons forever. Yeah, he's been doing. He he's continues to do voiceover work. Darth Maul and do you yeah. play Darth Sidious too? I feel like I feel like he did. Yeah, he's done a bunch of stuff. He's really good, and he was also on BSG. I love that guy. All right. When well, Jar Jar going to show back? <laughs> That's what I want. I think Jar Jar died. Jar Jar? No, Jar Jar alive, man. He's still no, kicking. I think he died. Did he die? Yeah, we're going to go with that. When's the when's the gritty reboot of the Jar Jar series? That's what Jar we Jar. Mean. It's just going to be called Binks. Yeah. Misa Binks. Yeah, I want him showing back up. And who else could we drag out of the... Oh, Mace Windu, he survived. That's the theory. That's a theory. Yeah. Oh, oh, Samuel L. Jackson. That's the thing. Samuel L. Jackson needs to show up on this Disney Plus show with Boba Fett and just literally start cursing the entire time. If Boba Fett cannot survive the Sarlacc pit, Mace Windu can survive falling out a window, being electrocuted by Palpatine. Like, literally anything's up for grabs at this point. Well, I mean, Palpatine came back. We don't even know how that happened. No, he, no, we do know because it said somehow Palpatine returns. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need. That's all the information you need. That's Riders, all you need to right? know. JJ, we, uh, they, Jar Jar is paid dead. This, we paid this guy $10 million to say somehow Palpatine returns. <laughs> uh, they Jar Jar is dead. I want to get that out there. Jar Jar is dead. How did he die? His canonical fate is an ignoble death as a homeless street clown who entertained children. As he deserves. I was hoping he got run over by like one of those pod racers. <laughs> Just like obliterated. <laughs> That's so sad. I hated Jar Jar. I hated Jar Jar when I went to watch it in the theaters in 1999. Nine. Yeah, yeah, 99. Yeah, 99. I remember. Did me and you watch that together? No. Who? Me and you. Episode one? It was probably me and John. I yeah. mean, I was five years old. 
Oh my God, you were. Kind of, what <laughs> I you? was five years old. I didn't meet you till I was like 13. <laughs> so me and one of my other friends, we went and watched episode one in theaters. And like, I walk out. I'm like, I really want to like this because of Star Wars, but this seemed really stupid. I did watch episode one for the first time with your nephew. Yes. Which is kind of funny. I watched it on VHS. At house. <laughs> I didn't watch it with you in the theater, but I did watch it with your nephew. <laughs> Forever linked. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this show. Charday get better. Episode three, maybe it's better. Maybe it continues to grow in betterness. Maybe Going Boba up. just gets fatter. <laughs> by by the end, by like he, the becomes, episode, he, comes, he becomes a hut in the very the, end. Yeah. I mean, look by at Bib. Fourth. He got fat, too. This is all a body positive show of Star Wars. And by like the fourth or fifth episode, he's like, you know what? That letter, let's try. Let's give that a try. Let's give that a try. So that's just them carrying him around those those uh, the the green guys. And he's just shooting people, sniping people from the litter, yelling at his guys to run. <laughs> run me over here quick. I don't think they had near enough folks holding up them twins. That's all I'm saying. Cause them, yeah, they, they had like eight people on each side. Yeah, that wasn't enough because they were still struggling. <laughs> How much you think a hut weighs? Uh, at least a ton. I'd say, sure. I was thinking more like five, six hundred. No, I'm yeah. thinking a ton. I'm thinking a ton. They're huge and they're dense. I mean, they're not that dense. They got strangled by a small woman with a chain. That's right. You know, <sighs> my my cousin that happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's- that's why that is why a woman with a chain strangled him yeah that's why i don't go to alabama stuff like that things happen you just got to be careful just minding your business next thing you know some crazy lady with a bike chain it's all it takes all right what's going (laughs) to do for this episode thanks for coming on thanks for listening welcome thanks for coming on jerry Brought a little bit uh brought a little bit of uh class i guess you could say i appreciate that you're welcome All right. Until next time, we'll see you. Bye-bye.